Hi, and welcome to the Bi-Weekly Show. I am Kyle Schickner, and I'm excited to be here on the first uh, episode of our, what I'm hoping will be a very long uh, run with Equality TV. Um, the Bi-Weekly Show originally started out as a, uh, in development over at Logo, um, before Logo decided to stop doing any gay programming that didn't have the words of RuPaul in front of them. Uh, and um, it was initially conceived as a mashup between The Daily Show and Real Time with Bill Maher, and looking at sort of the LGBT community from the bisexual's perspective. Um, and this is what we're going to do each week. You're going to come, we're going to click on the YouTube, and you're going to watch it. We're going to talk about a bunch of different things from the perspective of a bisexual white male. I certainly don't claim to have uh, to be the voice for every bisexual out there. Um, I also know that even me using the word bisexual will cause a few people... Um, who don't identify as either straight, lesbian, or gay, to bristle a little bit. Um, I'm going to use the word bisexual regularly. It's the word I grew up with, started using in the early 90s. It's the word that makes most sense to me. I know there are other words out there. There's fluid, and there's uh, questioning, and there's a whole bunch. And I want to look at that. I want to look at the reasons for all these new terms coming out there. Are they valid reasons? Um, do they make sense from a political standpoint, from a social standpoint, or is it perhaps maybe a a response from the failure of my generation, my my generation of bisexual activists, to not really define clearly what bisexual means as an as a political uh, stance, as an actual valid identity? Um, so we're going to look at that. We're also going to sort of deal with things that are less heavy. We're going to look at um, pop culture. Uh, books that deal with bisexuality, both fiction and non-fiction, um, uh, movies, TV shows, any anything sort of that lives in the pop culture realm. I'm, I'm a big believer that pop culture is really what makes, that, that, that spurs on change in a, in, a, in a culture. I think that um, there are the uh, the grassroots activists, and that gets and that builds the fire, and that builds the fire. But then once it hits some kind of pop cultural moment, and I think the biggest one in the gay in the gay um, the history of queer politics and queer culture um, would be Ellen coming out. I think that uh, was a huge shift in in how. Everyone in America, not just in California, in San Francisco, and in, in New York, and and uh, everybody, my mother, the people over the in the flyover states, that changed everything. And Ellen gave way to Will and Grace, um, which then led to and made Glee happen. And now it's gotten to the point where you cannot have a TV show without a gay character um, because there's the advertising dollars of the LGBT community is. Uh, is something that you know they don't know. They no longer want to sort of uh, look away uh, and walk away from. I also want to say that um, I will be using the word queer often as a, as an umbrella term for the LGBT community. Um, uh, there's a lot of letters. It takes a while. I only get eight or nine, ten minutes to do this, and I don't want to spend six of them re repeating LGBT, LGBT, LGBT. Um, I think there is a um, I like the word queer. I know there are certain people that sort of bristle with that as well. They don't like it. I will be using it. I don't mean to offend. If I do offend, screw you. You need to have a little bit of a thicker skin. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that uh, so so I will be so bisexual and queer. Those are the words that I'm going to be using. Um, and uh, one of the things that I, I find interesting is is why bisexuality has been the B has been so marginalized by the L, the G, and the T. And let's be completely honest, it's really not the T ever, is it? It's really the L and the G. And, and why that was, and what that has to do with, um, and where that comes from. I want to, um, you know, so in addition, what we're also going to do, we're going to have profiles of, of, of people who either identify as bisexual, bisexual um, whether they're singers or authors or activists. Um, I want to sit down and have interviews with people who don't, necessarily identify as bisexual, maybe who are, who have some seriously um, anti-bisexuality views. I'd love to sit down with uh, anyone who sort of feels um, 
bisexual isn't a, isn't a, isn't real or doesn't exist. Um, I know there's an article that's going to come out. I think in the New York Times soon about bisexual men don't exist, which you know is fascinating to read something about you and say you don't exist. Um, but you know, I'd love to sit down with Dan Savage and want to know why he has no problem um, putting down and uh, uh, minimizing the B in the LGBT community. Um, so that's that's all that we have planned for that. Um, I also want to also have turn the mirror on the bisexual community as well. Um, I I think that. One of the reasons, about 50% of the reason that we are, we find ourselves sort of on the, on the fringes of the LGBT community, why, why people don't necessarily want to include us, while GLAAD has no interest in sort of sticking up for um, uh, anti-bisexual sentiments, um, but will, you know, go to, the, go to the mat for anyone that thinks to say faggot, um, but actually doesn't do it, um, or makes fun of transgender or or lesbians, which they should. The problem is there is sort of this weird sort of looking the other way with when it when it comes to bisexuality, even again, lifting up Dan Savage as this 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 icon, even though he's openly and rabidly anti bisexual, strikes me as something that um, the bisexual community has a responsibility. There has been a reason why um, the lesbian community the lesbian culture and the gay culture and the transgender culture have built up this uh, this support behind them, and again, it is because of there is a culture that they have they've created and they've sustained. Whereas um, the bisexual culture really doesn't exist. There are bisexual authors and there are bisexual artists, but when they get to a certain level of success, they are usually um, uh, co-opted. By the mainstream gay lesbian community, and there's been and there's no need or 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 pushback from the bi community. Say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't want us. You put us down. That they're one of us, you know. And so so we have been unable to to sustain a culture um, without it sort of being sort of led into the mainstream gay lesbian culture, and then puts keeps us in the in the background. Um, uh, even the you know again the word bisexual is 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 one of the things that um, I think is we've let the, the younger generations down. I don't want to explore that. I will be as as critical of our community as I am uh, critical of the lesbian, gay, and straight communities when they don't accept or put down bisexuality. Um, uh, so yeah, and. Um, and just one, you know, the thing about me is I, I've been in this bisexual activism thing for the last, going on 20 years. I started the first collegiate bisexual group um, on Rutgers campus called Bias, Bisexuals Achieving Solidarity. And uh, I, I started it because I wasn't accepted enough in the, um, in the gay lesbian group on campus. I went there as early on. Uh, AIDS crisis was still going on, and I wanted to uh, support and be involved. And they were very clear with saying, "No, no, 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 no. You can be in the background. We don't want you up front because you're not gay enough. You're bisexual. And when you really come out, then then join on." And I, you know, sort of got annoyed by that and fed up and couldn't understand the prejudice within people who are being oppressed. And I started Bias, um, and then later started a film company called Fence Sitter Films, which. Um, you know, up until a couple of years ago, even though I've been out for 20 years, my mother had no idea, didn't make the connection between fence sitter films and, you know, me being bisexual. Um, and I've gotten a lot of flack from the bisexual community for calling our, ourselves by uh, fence sitter films, saying that we're, we're, we're taking a, a word that's offensive and, and glorifying it. Um, I don't see it that way. I like being a fence sitter. There's something very interesting about being a fence sitter. You can be a fence sitter and not make decisions or have any opinions of your own or sort of not wanting, wanting to take a stand. And that's not the kind of fence that I am. I, uh, sitting on the fence for 20 years, it's interesting. It's You're higher up. You, you see um, a different perspective than the mainstream gay lesbian culture or the mainstream straight culture. You're an outsider in the outsider's world and you really get an interesting perspective. And what I'm, what I sort of 
invite everyone each week is to come up, climb onto this fence of mine. Let's look down and sort of see exactly what it is and sort of to try to deconstruct and figure out the best way for the L, the G, and the B and the T all to work together as they should have been for the last 50 years and find a way that we can all be happy and healthy and love the people we want to love and, um, you know, kick in the ass the people that needed a little kick in the ass. So uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. And